Hey everyone, I'm Robbie Cornthwaite. I'm Daniel Mullen. I'm Angelo Costanza. I'm Marco Fleury. I'm Marcelo Garuska. I'm Ian Fife. This is Casio, and you're watching. 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 And you are watching Pure Bread Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. Welcome to the Pure Bread Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. I'm your host, Ellis Gelios, coming to you today with a preview of our important game tonight against Perth Glory. And I'm joined by none other than a former Perth Glory player and a legend of the game in South Australia. He's played for numerous clubs, including West Adelaide and Adelaide City, where he's coached as well. And he is now a current uh, youth team coach or reserves coach, whichever way you want to look at it. Mr. Paul Pezos, thank you so much for joining me, mate. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Um, great to get you on, Paul. So uh, we're just going to do a quick little preview of uh, the game tonight, the big A-League game, and then we'll get into a biographical interview uh, touching on your entire career and um, getting to know the uh, man behind the player a little more as well for those that uh, may not know you so much outside of the coaching dugout. So uh, I just quickly, before we get into that, just quickly want to touch on uh, your current situation with uh, the youth team. Obviously, in a difficult situation as it stands with uh, a lot of important players away in the A-League hub, um, but you're still showing a lot of resilience in games. How's it all going through at the moment? Yeah, good. Um, like like you said, uh, I've lost the uh, majority of my, my my players to the A League hub. Uh, but to be fair, um, it's a good experience for the younger boys coming in and gaining some NPO experience. Um, yes, the results haven't gone our way the past two weeks. Uh, but in saying that, uh, we're not expecting to get a result with the team that we've got, and all we're asking for these boys is to follow a process and do the best they can. And I, I, got, I can only praise them for the last two weeks um, on to, in terms of their performances and, and what they've, they've shown to me. Brilliant stuff. We like to hear that very much. Now, we're just going to quickly skim over tonight's game because uh, it is a very important one. So we do play your former employers uh, tonight at 7 p.m. at Bankwest Stadium. You can catch the action live on Fox Sports and the KO Sports app. Now, uh, Paul Al Hassan Toure is our only unavailable player. Uh, he's someone who I'm sure you'd know well. Bit of a loss. Yeah, I mean, uh, our son is a you know he was a rough dime, and uh, he's a player that uh, I brought across from Croydon Kings. Um, I identified him, and he had some uh, really good talent. And uh, you know, he, he's a loss. He, he's a he's a game changer. He's, he's enthusiastic. Um, and you know he's an exciting uh, player that you want to watch, but unfortunately, you know um, he's injured. But uh, we can't wait for him to get back soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the glory will pull ahead of us by a comfortable margin on the table if they beat us tomorrow. Uh, sorry, tonight. Uh, whilst a win for us will put us on level points with them, they're coming off a disappointing loss. While our form hasn't been uh, very bad at all since the restart, they're also without uh, Castro. And we know that it's affected their rhythm going forward. Is this a good time to be playing your old club, in your opinion, Paul? Oh, it's a perfect opportunity. Um, I mean, obviously, with the, the COVID-19 crisis and you know, everyone had time away, and it's a pretty even le level field at the moment. Um, I wouldn't be looking at that too much because there's been a lot of disruptions and, and players not playing for certain clubs. Uh, but I think... You know, um, Cole's done a fantastic job in the short term, and you can see the boys are, are playing um, and are, are being courageous and, and just being themselves, I guess. Um, you know, they got the draw against Brisbane um, and and uh, on the weekend against Wellington. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's a perfect opportunity for them to get the three points, and they can do it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so, Cole Viet's. Uh, certainly giving the youth a go from our camp's point of view, including plenty of future stars who have come through under your tutelage. Uh, we're now also seeing the likes of Lockie Brook and Taras Kamulka get plenty of game time too. In your view, just how good is our young crop of players compared to those across the league? And how thrilled have you been to see Carl Vier investing so much in them so early on in his stint as the head coach of our league team? Yeah, I think... Um, and I'm not being biased here. I, I think South Australia has the best juniors going forward. 
And if you have a look at every other state, they've got a lot to pick from. In South Australia, we don't. Uh, but the players that we've had in our system have developed and are striving to become first team players or professional players. In saying that, we can develop players, but if the senior coach doesn't believe in them or take them on, our job's wasteful. So it did start, in credit to Gurchin, he gave the young players an opportunity. And now that Carl's in, in the helm of the senior coaching role, uh, he's invested time in youth players and Carl's a big um, fan of playing younger players and that's uh, the way um, our club is based on. That's our philosophy and it's exciting times. Yeah, really well said. Um, so we've certainly seen an altered approach to our senior team's playing style since after the restart. From a coaching perspective, what do you think the type of approach should be uh, in negating a typically well-drilled Tony Popovich team? Yeah, well, it's a it's a tough one. Uh, you can see uh, every team that he's coached are very disciplined, and and he plays you know um, an attacking brand of football, but also a good defensive brand of football as well. So um, I haven't got into it too much because obviously I don't analyse much of the A League games and oppositions. But um, you know, it's going to be a battle. I think both teams are evenly matched, um, but I still think. Uh, we got a bit more dynamic going forward with, in terms of the speed that we've got with our with our uh, wingers. Brilliant. Uh, no, good to sort of draw on your coaching wisdom there. So, how do you see it panning out overall, Pez? Are we uh, are we up for a win here? Oh, most definitely. I think if we can get the three points, I think we'll be we'll be in the finals. We'll be safe. So, um, again, it's not depending on. Uh, other results, we just have to worry about ourselves. But I think Carl and the boys are ready for it, and uh, and I hope they do get the three points. Sure, Be- beautiful stuff. I love to hear that. Well, that does us for the preview. So we're going to go straight into your biographical here, Paul. So uh, we'll get back to the start of your playing career in a moment. But first up, uh, it's about Perth Glory, who we face tomorrow night, and they're the club you got to experience a week before we're back in the 2006-07 season. Um, probably didn't play as many games as you would have liked, but just touch on your brief stint at Perth for us and your main memories from that season. For the record, uh, you were recommended by legendary South Australian striker Damon Murray after standing out for Adelaide City back home in Adelaide during that time. Yeah, so uh, I was doing really well here with Adelaide City, probably uh, the best times of my, of my soccer career, uh, winning so many championships and having uh, Damon as my coach. Um, yeah, it was a good... It was a good um, opportunity uh, to go over. So it was based on a short-term contract only. It was a six okay. weeks. Uh, one of their players had, had a long-term injury. So they flew me over, uh, trained for about three, four weeks under Ron Smith. And then uh, obviously going from MPL to A-League, uh, the level of game is, is you know, chalk and cheese. So it's not similar at all. So basically I had to get up to the speed of the game and then uh, started against uh, Central Coast. Funny enough, I played against Damien in that game because he was at uh, Central Coast. And the Mariners, yeah. On, on, a, on a loan deal and uh, it did, did really well. Normally I'm a, I'm a centre back or sweeper back in those days, but uh, they did put, put me as a six, as a defensive midfielder. Mm-hmm. Done really well that game. Got some votes from SBS, I remember. Got, uh, I think, two, two votes. Um, and then uh, the next game we played against uh, Sydney FC, uh, sort of, Ron Smith sort of uh, was monitoring me, started me on the bench and then came off, uh, came on, God knows how long to play. And then, uh, funny enough, I played against LA United at uh, Cooper Stadium or the old Marsh and uh, got sent off. Um, for elbowing a good friend of mine, Ross Aloisi. <laughs> by the way, by the way, he fell. So he played it well when sort of ended my stink with Perth. I'm, sh- I'm sure he did. I have no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. So that was my time in Perth and uh, really, really loved it. Um, good good uh, bunch of guys. Ron Smith, uh, a great coach. Um, you know, he, he knows his, uh, his craft and, uh, you know, can never be thankful you know to Damien for giving me that opportunity to just 
put my name forward and uh, and and for Ron Smith as well. I want to thank him for giving me an opportunity as well. I'm just interested. Um, I mean, it came at a sort of later stage in your career. Um, why have you slipped through the net with Adelaide United, particularly in the NSL NSL era? Did you ever sort of get any feedback on on why that had occurred? So when Adelaide United first started uh, in the first season, I did get a phone call from John Cosmina uh, to come up to come out and uh, do a pre-season. At that stage, uh, I was at Blue Eagles, and that was in 2003, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, we won the title with Blue Eagles in the NPL, and then we were a little bit unsure as to what was happening the following year because uh, we had a coach by the name of Dragon Sipka. Uh, from Serbia, so we weren't sure when it was come back. So we were a little bit delayed on on our pre-season for the following season. Uh, if I look back at it now, should I've done my own pre-season? Yes, of course. Uh, but at that point, uh, I was just sort of taking the role of yep. Yeah, when the club's ready to go, we start pre-season. Um, and I was unfit at that time, and I told John Cosmina, "Listen, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot at the moment." I'm not in the best shape. And uh, he said, no, I appreciate your honesty. And, and that's where we left it, basically. And then I think when Vidi uh, took over, then I had a bit, uh, had another trial with them at that stage. Uh, played, a, played a friendly game. But uh, unfortunately, he said, you know, we've got enough players like yourself. I think at the time it was Valcarnas and Costanzo. Yeah. So, um, and that, that was the setback. But... Minor setback, but I move. For, you move on for those setbacks and just do what you can do. It's very interesting to hear. Uh, so let's rewind a little. You started your senior playing career at West Adelaide during the NSL era, a club where you would return on multiple occasions as a player and later as a coach. But we'll get back to that soon. Uh, you then went on to play for a plethora of local SA clubs, including Adelaide City, where you've got an equally recognised legendary status. Um, you played over 100 games accumulatively for both of these iconic clubs, which is a very rare accomplishment too. Uh, describe how you saw your playing days at these two traditional rivals as a defensive midfielder, I assume, for the most part. I had a good opportunity. I was in the AIS at, at the time, and then Adrian Santrak took over from West Adelaide. And then Selwyn asked me to come back to sign a contract, and uh, which I did. Um, so... Was you know Adrian gave me an opportunity to my soccer career and I thank him for that and we still keep in contact with coach against each other in the women's game when I was coaching LA City and mm-hmm. he was at Salisbury Inter he's now at West Adelaide so really loved uh, my time at West Adelaide especially in the NSL days uh, just the camaraderie between all the players had played with my idol Lou Christodoulou if people remember him you know uh, probably arguably the best Greek Australian player to play in, in our country and then I went overseas to play in Greece for Pontenacos so and then got a legendary status there. Uh, yeah, loved it. Uh, loved every moment. It was pretty much full time. Uh, it's something that we all aspire to do. Um, and then unfortunately West LA folded back in uh, 99 season. Yeah. And then that's when I went back to uh, to local football. Um, then I did join uh, Bird Colour at the time, which was Adelaide Galaxy. Mm-hmm. That was owned by Con Macris, um, who said that uh, he was looking to push to go into the A-League again, or the old NSL, sorry. So a few, few of us players went to Galaxy under the assumption that, you know, we're going to be pushed up to the uh, NSL. But that never happened. Nevertheless, we won a championship there as well. Um, and then went to Blue Eagles um, and then moved on to LA City. Uh, Damien called me in the off season and said, "Pez, love to have you come across to to LA City." And uh, straight away I took the opportunity. You know, uh, obviously Damien is a legend of, of our game too, and uh, so went across to LA City. Um, loved every, every moment. We had a great bunch of boys. Uh, we had a, a good culture, and I think that was uh, the, the drive to our success um, mm-hmm. was. Just the boys, the team that we had with Damien, uh, we assembled a great culture down there. Um, and then it was just finals after finals. It was uh, quite crazy. So, um, you know, we weren't 
number one, number two on the table. We'll probably, we used to just sneak into the top five and then we used to make a run home and uh, a lot of clubs didn't like us for that. And then the year that was first past the post, we won it. So uh, I had great memories, great fond memories, great mates down there. Still speak to Damien, um, you know, great coach. And uh, yeah, I, I always reflect and I, I speak to my children about those times uh, because not many people win championships. Not many good, good teams of players win championships. And I was lucky enough to win, I think, something like 13 in total. Um, once I sort of came to an end of, uh, well, not to the end of my career, but I gave as much as I could to LA City. Yeah. And I thought it was time for me to step aside, uh, obviously give some younger boys an opportunity. Um, so part of ways uh, with LA City, uh, on, on good terms, yeah. Um, obviously, we had we had great success there. So, and then obviously spoke with Ross uh, when he was coaching LA uh, West Adelaide. Uh, called up for a coffee. He goes, "Pez, would you like to come across?" I say, "Yep, no problem." Uh, at that time, they were in the state league. Yep. Uh, so joined them in the state league. Uh, we won the title, and then we got uh, promoted to the uh, MPL. Um, Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. So. And then 2014 came. Was your, again, your, last, finished, your last playing year, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that was my last playing year. Again, being competitive in the MPL was, I wanted to take a backward step, but uh, unfortunately we got promoted. So I said, all right, I'll go one more year. And uh, to be fair, we did really, really well, we we're really good, you know, yeah. very competitive. Um, you know, we we're, we're competing, being some of the big teams, LA City, I remember. You know, beating them 3-2, big crowd. And then um, halfway through, Ross got an opportunity to uh, go off and coach the Matildas. Yeah. Or assist the Matildas. So, and, uh, so Joel Porter took over um, as a player coach. Um, and then it didn't last long for whatever reason. And then the club approached me to see if I was happy to take over. And I said, yeah, by all means, no problem. Now, at that time, I had been coaching. So, previously taken over from West LA Seniors, uh, I'd coached junior teams, both at LA City and West Adelaide, um, from under 12s to 15s. Um, my under 15 team at West Adelaide, we went undefeated in South Australia, won the Manchester United Cup and came fourth in Australia. Um, and then that team went straight up into the under-18s the following year. Um, won the uh, Federation Cup at Highmarsh, lost in the quarterfinals on penalties uh, that year. Um, I was away during that time because I was completing my A-licence uh, coaching course. And then um, and also I was coaching uh, the NTC girls team as well because Ross was away. So I was doing two coaching gigs, and then when the LA, West LA seniors came on, I've two and three teams for that year, so it was pretty tough times, but I managed. So You, uh, you, you certainly did manage, so obviously we'll, we'll get into that. So, uh, yeah, after retiring as a player at West Adelaide, you, you did immediately step into a coaching role in 2015 yeah. and tasted your first major success as a manager, winning the MPL SA with Westies. It was an incredibly good squad. Uh, and you had a dominant season. Uh, surely it's one of your best memories in football. Yeah, one of, uh, because I, I did well with LA City Women's as well, which I yeah, quite enjoyed nice. too. So, but yeah, with the West Adelaide, uh, 2014, obviously, you know, we lost on penalties in the semi final, and I had a quite a young team. So I dropped, I lost two players, Kempi and, uh, um, and Jace Cummings, in that game. Uh, they came off and uh, had some young boys, which I blooded, that were in my 18s team. So then they were some regular starters and some new ones. And we lost on penalties, unfortunately. Um, but in 2015, um, we had uh, assembled a good squad, a squad with the younger players. Um, and uh, yeah, it was an unbelievable season. Um, just the endeavour, the resilience from these players, the, the willingness was unbelievable. I couldn't, I couldn't fault them. You know, uh, we won everything. You know, we won minor premiers, um, you know, champions and, and things like that. So it was uh, fantastic. And being 
you know, from a Greek background, and after I think 42 years to win a title for the club, yeah, totally. um, it, it, it was an amazing feeling. Well, uh, you very quickly became regarded as the sharpest coaching mind in the state. Um, managerially, as you've touched on as well, you've got you've had all bases covered, having been the assistant to the Adelaide United W League side, as well as having managed the most unbeatable Adelaide City senior women's team that we've ever seen. Uh, can you outline the different types of challenges involved in working across the senior men and women at a semi-pro level? Yeah, the, the, there are some differences. Uh, as, a, as a coach manager, uh, I've got my principles of, on how I want to play. And, and that doesn't change whether it's uh, women's or men's football. Mm -hmm. That stays the same. But in terms of um, your persona, I guess, can may need a change because obviously in the uh, female game, it can be a little bit harsh on them. Um, where in the male game, you know, they, they can Cult accept. Cultural but, differences, yeah. Yeah, they can accept and all that. So, uh, and, and the girls ask a lot of questions. So you've got to be prepared to give them the answer. So if you're asking them something and they question you, you've got to have some substance behind you as to why you want it. Um, but in saying that, um, again, one of my best coaching experiences was with the uh, LA City Women's and uh, amazing people down there. Uh, the girls were fantastic. Um, again, built a good culture and... Uh, I'm forever grateful to them because they really, again, kicked off my uh, my coaching career as well. And, I mean, that's an important point because they're now like three managers down the line since you were there and we're still seeing a sort of unrivaled brand of football being played there. So um, a real credit to you for, for implementing everything you have uh, in the Adelaide City women's setup. Uh, we'll move along, Pez. So in 2017, your young coaching career took another forward step, having joined Adelaide United as the youth reserves head coach, where you tasted huge success in your first season, having won the competition. Uh, two senior players emerged from that squad and are still with us presently in the A-League squad right now, in Ryan Strain and Lockie Brook. Uh, and many, many talented players were elevated to our senior list from that elite team that you had who have now been moved on uh, from Adelaide United. Describe what it was like to mentor such a talented group of youngsters and the personal challenges you've had to encounter now in charge of a far younger age group than what you've been previously uh, accustomed to in your career as a coach. Yeah, so again, uh, I've done a double coaching role because Adelaide United came in... Uh, offered me a role with the reserve team and that's when I was still coaching LA City. Yeah. Um, so I didn't want to walk away from the girls. Uh, so fortunate love, fortunately enough, uh, LA United were training in the mornings. So I was doing LA United in the morning, seven o'clock, and then I was doing the girls in the evening at six o'clock. And I'll just so. stop you there as well. People should know that you do work full time as well. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I uh, own a labor high company. So um, my kids used to call me Santa. They only used to see me once a year, really. So uh, Makes sense. thank God, thank God that's changed now. But yeah, it, it was a privilege um, to coach. Uh, well, it's a privilege to coach LA United. So I took on the reserve team. Uh, yeah, we had great success. Uh, we won the cup, and uh, again, we won the title in the reserve grade. Yeah. And uh, from from that year, then I got promoted to. Uh, the head of the youth team, so which was another step up, which gave me uh, the opportunity to coach some of this uh, outstanding talent that we've got in the first team at the moment. So uh, I didn't have too much time with Strainy uh, because he only had a short time. Then he yeah, he went he went up pretty team. quick. Yeah, uh, and and Lockie Brook the same. But uh, managing those kind of players, it wasn't hard, and it's not hard because. They, they're desperate, they want it, they're keen, they're eager. Um, so it was just about fine-tuning and challenge, challenging them individually and as a group. Um, and it's no different to the team that I've got today, uh, the current team. So we do, the, it's the same process. We challenge them physically, mentally, uh, because as you will well aware, 
is when you're up in the first team, it's a different kettle of fish. You're going to be challenged mentally. You're going to be challenged physically. Are you strong enough? Is your character strong enough to sustain that pressure? And that's what we try to implement as well as other stuff in the youth team. So we want to get them well prepared for when they do get an opportunity. So we're trying to bridge that gap from youth team to the A-League. And if we can do that, then it makes it easier transition. And I think as we're doing that, it's become easier. And that's why you can see a lot of young players being able to step up and uh, and help out in the first team. Um, you're known as as a fairly firm coach. So I take it from what you've just said, you you, you don't hold back at all, given that they're uh, a much younger age group at all? Yeah, no, I've, I've changed over the years of my coaching. Uh, we, we all learn. Um, one thing, I'm, I'm not arrogant. I like to listen to people. I take on information. I speak to a lot of well-known coaches. Uh, I speak to Aurelio Bidmar, a good friend of mine. I speak to Tony. I speak to Ross. I speak to Joe Mullen. Um, and, you know, and they the people that have helped me along my journey and have evolved me. Um, and if I was arrogant or stubborn, I wouldn't change. But I'm always open. I want to become better. And it's like the player, the player always wants to become better. So my approach can be different uh, from what it used to be. Of course it is. Um, but yeah, I, I still am firm, but I'm fair. Yeah, uh, I try and get the best out of, of my players. Um, and I don't let them not give me 100% because yeah. if they do that at training, it's going to happen in the game. And especially with kids, you're going to have up and down peaks, right? That's that's known. But what we're trying to do, we're trying to have more ups than downs. And that comes to the coaching uh, in a training session, not allowing them to be complacent. Yeah, no doubt about it, Pez. Um, I just want to quickly touch on one thing. So it's been put on the record that... Uh, there were communication issues between our A-League and Youth League set up uh, back in a few years back. Um, obviously, we've seen so many players emerge from your setup into the senior team now uh, throughout this season in particular. Um, can we safely assume that's that's only going to improve now as well with uh, with Carl Viet at the helm? Because obviously, you and Carl would know each other very well. Yeah, and, and like, like I said, it, it wasn't the communication. Oh, well, there was some communication issues, I, I should say. Yeah, there was. Uh, but, you know, the, we had a senior coach that wasn't coming to any of the games. You know, As we know now, yeah. He came, he came to two and a half games, you know. So how can you see what's going on in their youth department? You know, yeah, I could speak to uh, coaches, but you got to see it for your eyes. And that, that changed drastically when Gurchin came. Gurchin was at every single game. Um, yeah, we had spoken on the phone about... You know how the game went. Uh, what was the positive? What was the negatives? Um, but you know, moving forward now with Carl, um, he's a he's a South Australian coach, uh, South Australian boy. He knows the league. He knows the players. Um, you know, we speak on a regular basis, um, and that helps. And and uh, that's the best thing for the for LA United is that to have communication from youth team to the uh, a league because at the end of the day, where are you going to get your players from? From your youth team, and Absolutely. that's the aim. And it's it's going really well so far. We love the sound of that, Paul Pezos. Now you've had plenty of success in charge of our youths, including a phenomenal 2018 season where the team achieved unprecedented heights in the NPL. Uh, with all players available, how far do you believe this team can go? And uh, and as fans. Do we have the right to expect that the production line of quality will continue to be unearthed and ele and elevated in the senior team uh, in the coming years? Yeah, uh, well, undoubtedly, if I have uh, the full strength team, um, you can see that uh, we're a dangerous team. You know, we, we, we play good football, we play good brand attack football, um, and I believe, in my opinion, uh, that we can be finals contention without a doubt. You know, um, 2018 was a fantastic year. Uh, I think we lost in the quarterfinals in the 96th minute to Metro oh, Stars, I think it was. Um, you know, unfortunately, but we've been super competitive. Uh, um, you know, with if you have a look at the results over the past couple of years, um, you know, any game that we lost was probably by one goal. 
very rarely was two goals. We beat some of the biggest clubs in Adelaide, the Campbell Towns, Blue Eagles, etc., the Metro Stars, um, the Olympics and all that. Um, I, I think we can be final kind of contention. Last year we missed out by, I think it was a game. Uh, but if you have a look at the players that I had at the back end, they were not available to us yeah. uh, because uh, the A-League uh, took uh, a few extra and away games, so which hurt us a little bit. But moving forward, I think uh, the club the club has, or the spectators and fans have got it, um, some good years ahead of them with some of the potential coming through. Um, it's exciting. Uh, I love going to training. I love watching these players grow. Um, and then, you know, watching them get an opportunity with the first team, there's no bigger thrill for me uh, to watch these players playing the first team because I feel proud and I feel so, I'm so uh, ecstatic just watching them spin on that mark. It's a great achievement for them. Yeah, I couldn't agree anymore, Paul. And I mean, it's it's just fascinating how I don't want to pump your tyres up too much, but um, looking at the youth team historically, it's always been a it, throughout the time they've been in the NPL, it's always been a case of um, you know surviving relegation. But uh, now the outlook is very very different, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, with all players available and all resources available to you uh it's dangerous how far this team would go and, and across the entire a league uh when it comes to mpl uh i think we're we're, we're sort of setting the benchmark i know perth glory might have won theirs last year they're, they're also very very strong in their league but um it's not often uh the case that you look at the the a league youth teams in their mpl in their respective mpl divisions and actually see them competing and we're not just competing we're actually blowing teams away a lot of the time so an absolute credit to you and the work you've done there um now many in the sa football community regard you as the sharpest coaching mind in the state um and definitely among uh, australia's next generation of uh, elite coaches uh so pez what are your future ambitions in football given you're still a very young head coach now yeah i've still got a lot of learning to do and i think uh uh, the the MPL, the WMPL has been a great stepping stone for me. Um, but if I want to become a better coach, I, I need some uh, bigger challenges. And those challenges uh, I won't get in the MPL. Uh, for me, it's uh, I want to progress into the next step into the A-League as an assistant coach, where I can be in a full-time professional environment and also learn from my superior or the head coach and also be able to give some of um, my knowledge and share. Um, so that's the next phase for me. Uh, still enjoy the MPL, um, but it's, you know, it's, got, it's got challenges, but it's not going to challenge me as a coach to progress. Um, so biding my time, wait for the right opportunity and hopefully... Uh, I can get there. Well, Paul, it's an absolute privilege speaking to you and uh, and really getting a, a lot of insights there into your entire career and what you're up to now and how you're progressing along now. Uh, we thank you very, very much for your time. All the best of luck Saturday against Metro Stars at TK Shutter Reserve. It's a big game for us. Um, and all the best going forward as well, mate. Great to speak to you. No, no worries. It was a pleasure. Anytime. No worries, Paul. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching, guys.